Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, happy Friday. Welcome back to our Top 5 Friday Ski Industry News videos. And boy, it's a scorcher here in Vermont, huh? I mean like shorts and biking in the afternoon, skiing in the morning. Pretty wild. Pretty wild. It was like 84 degrees here yesterday. Yesterday was hot. Yeah. Crazy. April 13th, 84 degrees. It'll be snowing before we know it. <laughs> It'll be snowing like next yeah. week. I actually think the mountain's going to get some snow next yeah. week. Yeah, no, this is definitely a fake early summer for sure. Yeah, but super hot here in Vermont. Um, pretty interesting, you know, just going, feels like somebody just flipped a switch from winter to spring. Right. It wasn't I like mean, a gradual progression. It was just like soft, dry snow, packed powder. Yeah. And then like insane melt. Right, like we had our deepest base like two weeks two ago. weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, that's how it goes around here. Yep. And with no rain, we were saying that earlier. It's right. Just, it was heat. It right. wasn't like we had like a rain event or anything like that. It's like well, it's just... actually been like really nice just from like a kind of cleanup perspective. Right. Yep. Like when it's not raining like that and you're just losing snow due to heat and sunlight. Right. Basically just evaporating. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Rivers are full. Yep, rivers are full, yep. but like, I don't know. I've seen a lot messier springs around here. <laughs> yeah, me too. Not much of a mud season this year. No. It's just kind of like dried. Yeah. Anyways, um, get right into the news. It's kind of a funny week for news. A lot of these things we can just kind of skim right through. Um, so, yeah, our apologies that this might not be like a super dynamic conversation, but who knows? Sometimes we just you go off know. the rails on these yep. things and end up being here for 20 minutes and we'll be like, what are we talking about? <laughs> um, so first topic of the week, um, if you remember last week, Matt McGinnis uh, was out at Kicking Horse coaching at IFSA Junior North American Championships. Um, and what we did for the first topic this week is Matt kind of wrote a first person recap from his trip. So instead of trying to give a third, a recap third of the recap. party recap of yep. his first, per yeah, I don't even know, um, <laughs> just encourage you to head on over to the written article and just read it straight from Matt. He's the one that was there. I wasn't there. Um, I will say that there were some strong finishes from some Vermont skiers, a couple that I've had my eye on for a few years now, uh, Luke never really known if his last name is pronounced Miel or if the E on the end is is included. Like Mieli? Yeah. Mieli? Yeah. Hmm. Anyways, his name's Luke. His last name is spelled M-I-E-L-E. -E. Definitely one to keep an eye on. Kid's a ripper. Uh, very, very smooth and I actually really enjoy watching him ski. He's worked a lot more like freestyle influence into his skiing recently, which I thought was really cool. Seems like that direction is... Getting into that big mountain totally. aspect more and more. Totally. This new generation of skiers is impressive. Yeah. It's pretty cool to see. Sometimes I feel like there's like waves of generational skiers. Yeah, and it'll go like, like more technical yeah. and then a more freestyle yeah. and kind of back and forth. Yeah, and I feel like we're hitting like a, the start of a new wave. Right that's just like a combo of everything. Right. And it's just dynamic, strong skiers, but then they can do like cork seven blunt. In the middle of a, of a competition big mountain run. Yeah. Which is like, yeah. I mean, that's always kind of been that lofty goal is can we incorporate this freestyle into these right. huge mountain faces? And for a while, like the only person that really could do it was like Candide. Right. And now you just see it all over the place. Yeah. So, yeah, head on over to the written article, uh, read Matt's recap, um, and, yeah, I really enjoyed reading it as well. Sounds yep. like they had a great trip. Um, so kudos to Matt and Emily as well, who's another one of our coworkers that was out there uh, coaching the same group of skiers. Strong work, Mad River free ride team yeah. and whoever else was there. Um, and then second topic of the week, this is pretty wild, huh, Bob? Which one's this? Indie Pass? Yeah. yeah. So after just 10 days of being on sale for next season, uh, Indie Pass has put sales on hold to prevent overselling. There was a quote, I can't remember the name of the individual who said this, but they were like, yeah, we anticipated this, but we anticipated it in the fall. 
yeah. not on April whatever, 14th, whenever it was that they actually shut right. it down. Right, less than two weeks. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there were a record number of pass holders that renewed in those 10 days, and there was also a surge of new buyers, which, you know, is, is obviously pointing out the popularity of the Indie Pass kind of in, uh, in contrast to Epic Pass and Icon Passes. Yep. Um, definitely a big demand for people that are for these smaller kind of independent resorts and people that want that experience. So they get two days at, I think it's over a hundred. It's a ton. Resorts now. Yeah, remember we were talking about like, can you get, can you, can you max, do it? Can you yeah. max out your Indie Pass? Yeah. Which I think the answer is no. No, and it's such an attractive option for people that kind of enjoy the travel aspect and can hit yeah. a bunch of different resorts and right. like that exploration thing. Like, you know, it, it doesn't work for us, you know, who, right ski at the same place all year, you know, and like people like that, it's just not, no, nope. not really a viable option, but also just goes to show that like skiing is really popular and people really enjoy this sport. Totally. Like, that's, that's a great thing. That's kind of the other takeaway from this is like the sport of skiing is in a really healthy place yeah. right now. Um, like there's just, just this resurgence of interest and yep. enthusiasm about skiing. And it's so, so fun to see. Yep. Totally. So, yeah, if you wanted to buy an Indy Pass and you didn't get one in that 10-day window, I would just pay really close attention to their social media. Yeah. Because I would expect that they'll reopen sales at some point. I think it's just going to be one of those things where when they reopen it, you got to jump on it. Yeah, it's a good deal for a lot of, a lot of ski days. If totally. You can make it happen. Yeah. I, would, like, I feel like I would love it if I was retired or something. Yeah. You know, the van, the van people, remember they paired with that van company? Right. You could, like, get yeah, a discount get a on your van with your Indy Pass or yeah. a discount on your Indy Pass with the van, I forget. But definitely seems to cater to that, you know, moving lifestyle yeah. skier. The adventure. Yep. Adventure lifestyle. Yeah. So, pretty interesting. Uh, let us know in the comments if you're one of those people that... Bought an Indy Pass in those 10 days. Or didn't get one. Or didn't get one and one. wanted one. Yeah, I'd be really interested. And I assume there's some crossover between yep. people that watch this and Indy Pass gears. Um, third topic of the week. This is kind of a continuation of last week when we were chatting about this, Bob. But uh, we had continued Little Cottonwood Canyon closures into this week. Um, really not much was happening there from Monday until today. Um, the road was still closed, still pretty significant avalanche, avalanche danger when it gets as warm as it is out there right now, you start getting wet slides and stuff like that. Um, but pretty much right before we posted the yeah. written top five news today, um, the road was opened. And as far as we know, both Alta and Snowbird are back to operating. What a mess though. Like just constant cleanup. Totally. That road. What, what a Well, mess. it's really interesting, too, because we were out there last year. Yeah. And we were out there, like, the equivalent of this past right. week. And I was thinking about that a lot. Like, if we had taken that trip. We wouldn't have gotten a ski. No, we would have just been hanging out in Salt Lake City yeah. for three days. And then came back. <laughs> yeah. I just thought that was really yeah. interesting. No, totally. And, like, there, there wasn't that much snow last year. So it's like, right. I... You know, I've only been out there a handful of times, and I, I would love to see the contrast between last year when we were there and, and what it looks like right now. Yeah, any of those, like, cam pictures and stuff like that, it's just, everything looks a lot smoother. Yeah. You know, it's like, crazy. everything just filled in. Yeah. There's some really cool videos of, like, people skiing the same line last year and this year during this week. Right, that's the kind of stuff I'm super yeah. interested in. Yeah, I'm getting, like, that's hitting my feeds now, and... You know, just like someone skiing a couloir last year, and then this year it's like a bowl. Yeah. Like, <laughs> totally different. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool. Pretty amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're out there, you know, we had a lot of people chime in last week, kind of giving us their own anecdotal experience, and I'd love to hear from you now. Um, how have things changed this week compared to last week? How have things changed just throughout this week? Last week, most people were like, there's too much snow. Yeah, totally. Like, the this comments is awful. That we got, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. So I also, like, really appreciate hearing that stuff. Right. 
No, that's interesting. It's fun for me. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Just selfishly, I like getting that information. <laughs> um, so, yeah, pretty interesting season out in Utah this yep. year. I feel like people are going to start, like, asking for, like, a certain amount of snow. Right. Like, can we just have 600 no. inches? Yeah, 800 is too much, 400 <laughs> is too little. Right. Like, we're going to need six. Right. Which I guess is a good problem to have. Oh, totally. Um, and then last topic of the week, this one will be really quick because I don't know too much about it yet other than it's about to happen. Um, but the Swatch 9s is going to start next week. Um, this is the event that has gone through some name changes over the years. It used to be Nine Nights, then it was Audi 9s, now it is Swatch 9s. Um, but, you know, the crazy jump, multi-jump build. Yeah. Sometimes it's been a castle. I don't think they've gone away from the castle theme since no. they got rid of the Knights title. But super cool. I yeah. can't wait. Super creative in their in the construction process, you know, like, kind of talked about this when they had like the Olympics in Beijing, which was like, yeah, you know, using like, you know, computer technology. They did super to, cool stuff to build the course. Yeah, yeah. It's just crazy how they're able to yeah. move and shape and sculpt snow to these crazy perspectives. And, and is it, oh gosh, I feel like I should know this. Is it all SPT? Do, does SPT do the nines course? Snow park, te snow park technologies? Not sure. I apologize for not being able to definitively say yes or no, but I'm pretty sure they do. I'm sure a and quick a lot Google of those, search will. Yeah, and a lot of those big events are done by SPT. Yeah. They get contracted to build a lot of high level yeah. courses. Pretty cool. Super Very cool. precise. Like just It'd be really fun to do. Lines and angles that they yeah. come up with are nuts. I like geometry. Yeah, me too. Should we start our own snow shaping company? Here you go. <laughs> I mean, like... Have you ever driven a cat? Not a cat, but I have, like, some, you know, mini excavator and... Yeah, me too. ...experience, but like... How hard can it be? Is that yeah. what you're saying? No, I'm saying <laughs> that... <laughs> I'm saying that there's a lot of people that are much more skilled operators out there. I once applied for a grooming job in Mammoth. Yep. And, like, on my resume, I put, like, all the golf course work and, like, yep. driving tractors and fairway mowers and rough mowers. And I was like, I'm a shoe-in for this job. Yep. And they told me I wasn't qualified. There are people with, like, 20 years of grooming experience. Like, yeah, or, yeah. like, heavy, like heavy like, equipment. Right, excavators. Yeah. Big excavators. Yeah. yeah. I guess that's a pretty substantial difference. Totally. I was just, like, in my mind, I was like, I'm really good at striping a fairway. Yeah. Wait until you see the groomer lines that I'm going to lay down. Well, and you'd think that as a skier, you would have, like, you know, not only just be more passionate about it, but yeah. also, like, kind of know it from a skier's perspective. Totally. So you'd think that those things would count in your favor. I might have built too many jumps, too. Yeah. Too many roller. You would have gotten fired in the third <laughs> yeah, week. Like real quick. <laughs> You can't put a jump in the Jeff, middle of the trail, right. Jeff. You put, you're supposed to put a slow sign there. Yeah. That's like, you can't put a jump there. That's an intersection. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, but it's a cool yeah, intersection. Look at that. Great landing. Anyways, so looking forward to Swatch 9s. And then lastly, we have our edits of the week. Um, so first we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have episode 5 of Moving Right Along from Michaela Schifrin. I think this was turned, in a, t turned into a successful series for her, I would yep. say. Pretty cool. I like kind of seeing the behind the scenes stuff. And then we have My Dream Ski Line with Nikolai Shermer. Pretty incredible skier. Just someone that's going way too fast down way too narrow things in way too remote locations, in my yeah, opinion. By your standards. By my standards. Probably like. Nikolai Shermer probably right, yeah. watches you ski and he's like, Yeah, that guy's going groomer. way too slow and <laughs> making way too many turns. That trail is way too wide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all perspective. <laughs> um, and then lastly, we have Cole Richardson's segment with MSP. Uh, they titled the video Living His Dream and kind of touched on how 10 years ago his goal was to film with MSP. And fast forward 10 years, you know, he is one of the most impressive skiers on their roster, I would say, and just an incredible skier. You were you were commenting on the 
leg strength he must have. It looks like he has really strong legs. Yeah, those cores are stiff too. Yeah, he doesn't doesn't seem phased by much. No. In terms of big landings and high speed. Yeah, and like we were talking about with the free ride stuff, like really good style. Right. Like he has this really cool mix of like he's clearly a very technical skier, but then he'll do like a big floaty cork three with a wide leg safety yeah. grab. So he's like kind of, I don't know, I like that. Yeah, no, it didn't look like much affected him from a strength and balance perspective. No. Looked pretty, pretty on it. Yeah. That's impressive. Pretty cool to see. Mm -hmm. um, maybe head could make him like a twin tip core. Can we get twin tip cores? Oh, although what's the widest oblivion now? I'm not sure. They got one bigger than the 101, right? I think so. Is it 102? I, I always know. forget. These numbers are all blending together. Though there's so many new 101s and 102s. Yeah. But there's a lot of tail splay in that big core. That's true. Yeah. The 111 and the 117. Yeah. You can take off and land switch on those things. Anyways, that's it for this week's Top 5 Fridays. Uh, closing weekend at Stowe. Yeah, they're going to be linking together some snow patches for sure. Yep, come absolutely. Sunday. <laughs> um, we're also celebrating the start of uh, golf season here in Lamoille County. That's right. So big, big times. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be one of my favorite uh, <laughs> sport combo days. Yep, the ski and golf combo. Ski and golf combo. Mm -hmm. Yep, I don't know that I can work in mountain biking yet. No, I'll have three sports today. I could probably go whitewater kayaking tomorrow, but that sounds cold. Yeah, but the water's good, right? Water's high. It's high. It's cold. Yeah. Well, be careful. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you think I should work in whitewater kayaking to my make it a trifecta. Yeah, it's a good triathlon. Yeah, tough. I don't know when I would do the kayaking. Early morning. I think I, I was thinking evening. Oh. Which is probably the worst idea. As the most dangerous activity, I'd be the most tired when I do it. Anyways, I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. Hope you're all able to get out on some snow. Maybe you live somewhere where everything's melted already. And if that's the case, I hope you get outside and do something else fun. Bob, hope you have a great weekend. You too. And we'll talk to you all next week. Bye.